and welcome to Be Wise Halkamalem Place Names presentation. I'm Bonnie Graham of Stalo and Snunamook Ancestry, and I invite you to enjoy and learn about the Stalo region Halkamalem Place Names presented by Sunny McKelsey. Thank you and enjoy. Ready? Mm -hmm. Llihlake is called and referred to as the Mother Mountain, and that's the mountain that you see right here, the tallest mountain. She was transformed into that mountain and given responsibility to watch over the river, watch over the people, and watch over the salmon. So that's why she's referred to as the Mother. But within the word Llihlake, you can see there's uh, to re-soak something, to rehydrate something, as well as the beginning part uh, has to do, do with, uh, with the glacier. So when you look at the mountain, there's a lake at the back, or on, on this side. And according to Edna Douglas, she said that, that that's where they would go and leave their dried salmon or smoked salmon to soak in the water uh, while they're picking berries. And that's why the, the name has something to do with resoaking something. And then if you go to the very back of the mountain, there's, there's a glacier back there that's there all the time. It never, never melts, right? So that's why part of that name is that. But again, that's the name with the... Mother Mountain. You can also see her two old, her oldest daughter right here, Sayawat. Her second oldest daughter right there is Iowat. Her youngest daughter's down here. You can't really see her uh, from this angle. You actually have to go right close to see her. And then you can see, of course, her dog, Squame. You can see the nose, bridge of the nose, the eyebrow, forehead, two little ears, and then the back of the neck. So it's like the head of the dog. So that's Squame. Three mountains back here are actually her three sisters, and she also has a half sister, Smimk, another mountain in the Jones Hill, Hill watershed. But she was the wife of uh, Mount Baker, and uh, she originally came from here, according to um, Amy Cooper. She originally came from here, she married this man down south, had six children, three sons, three daughters. Uh, she decided to come back home, so she left her husband down there, he was transformed into Mount Baker. Left her three sons down there, they were transformed into Mount Shasta, Mount Hood, and Mount Shuksan. Although some elders give different mountain names. But then she took her three daughters and their dog up here, and that's when she was transformed into that mountain and given that responsibility. Huahuastl, tell meaning place, huahuas meaning thunderbird. When you look at the word swahwas, uh, swahwas means opening his eyes. So when the thunderbird opens his eyes, he makes the lightning, flaps his wings, he makes the thunder, uh, urinates and makes the rain. And so this place is called swahwasto because it looks like a thunderbird. So you can see the top of the head here. You can see where the wingspan, this is the bend in the wing, and this is another bend in the wing over here. And then in the middle here, there's these two clearings here that look like eyes, two bare, bare bluffs that are kind of in there. And after a heavy rain, when the rain lands on those clear rocks, it just comes down here and zigzags down the mountainside. So you see two of them zigzagging down the mountainside. And so it looks like lightning coming out of the eyes. So that's why it's called Huahuasco, because it looks like lightning coming out of the eyes. Huahuasco is still considered to be very real uh, and, and still, still there today. Like the elders say, Huahuas is, uh, is very real. And it's still out there, and just that you know, people don't believe in it anymore. So the elders say it's still there. It's still considered to be very real. And many other homes throughout the territory for Quahwas. Thathala comes from Thala. Thala is the word for heart. So Thathala means shaped like a heart. So not a valentine heart, so don't look for a valentine heart. You have to actually look for a real human heart. So when you look at a human heart, you actually see what's called the small ventricle on the right side, the large ventricle on the left side here. And then on the a heart, you have that big vein that runs down the middle. So you come here, you see this big long crack that runs down, and that there is that vein. So it looks like a real heart, real human heart. Small ventricle, large ventricle, and that run, big crack running down to the middle. So thathala, so it looks like a heart, or shaped like a heart. Cow, K 
howl means to howl. And you can see this right here, what appears to be the upper jaw and the lower jaw of a dog or a wolf. Some, some elders say it's a dog, some elders say that it's a wolf. Two stories that come from this one story talks about how the, if, if it was a dog, its master had died and it was running to the top of the mountain. It was mourning for his master, howling, it had his mouth up. And then uh, Chachels came along, took pity upon him and transformed him to stone. So that's why you can see the jaws, the mouth is up like that and it's howling. Second story, more interesting story, I think, is and it really um, kind of connects to the last one, the one of Quahuas, because uh, Brent Galway talks about how um, this was a wolf and across the river is Quahuas, the thunderbird. And he says the two of them were actually fighting and then Chachels transformed them into stone. So that's why Quahuas transformed into that mountain and the wolf was transformed into this, this howling, howling rock right there. So that's cow. Kam kama. In that word, you can see the word for muck, the word for breast. So kam kama actually means the mountain goat breast. So if you look at this this part of the mountain right there, it looks like an upside down mountain goat breast. So that's kam kama. And also in front of it, you can see this other little mountain. You can see this ridge that goes across here. Two names that have been shared for it. One is kam thelis and the other one is kaywith. And that has to do with the rough shoulder of a mountain goat. So pretty clearly what it's indicating is that there's mountain goat up there, right? So the rough shoulder, the, the breast, and actually over here, you can see on this steep rock right there, uh, that's where the mountain goat uh, spend all their time over there. Kwekwe ala. So kwekwe ala comes from the word stingy. So stingy is squeakwe. Allah is like a container, so stingy container. And it's called that because on this rock right here that jets out into the Coquihalla River, it's that rock there that's Kwekwe Allah. It's really important to know that it's only that rock. The Lady Amelia Douglas, when I brought her out there, she points at that rock, she says, you see that rock over there? I said, yes. She said, that rock is Kwekwe Allah, only that rock, not the river, not the highway, just that rock is Kwekwe Allah. So it's called that because the, our fishermen would go there to spear salmon and just around the corner in this pool here, it used to be a deep pool, it's a very shallow pool now because of the, the water has changed its course. But that pool there is called Shwekwak and that's where the water babies live. And so when a fisherman would go spear salmon, the water babies, little people, or Salmach, would swim out, grab the salmon, pull it off their spear and not allow them to take the salmon. So that's why Kwekwe Ala, stingy container. Papla Heis. So Papla Heis means rising up. It has to do with this mountain here, right behind uh, Yale, Kwakalal, is in front here. And so when you look at this mountain, it's called rising up because when, during the flood story, our ancestors were running up to the top of this mountain to get away from the flood waters. And they say when they got to the top, the mountain itself rose to save the people. And so that's why it's called Papla Heis, meaning rising up. Kael Chalamas. Kael Chalamas was an Indian doctor who was using his power to get rich. And that's still, um, today, Indian doctors or anyone that has any spiritual powers are not allowed to use their special powers to get rich. They're not allowed to say no to us. We're not allowed to use the word hire. We're not allowed to use the word pay. It's very insulting to use those words to them. So when we gift them, we give them gifts to thank them. And they're not supposed to get rich from their power. So Kael Chalamus was one of those powerful Indian doctors who was actually doing that. And so Kael wanted to set an example of him. So he ended up doing battle. Kael Chalamus was actually up spasm visiting his brother Sklau. Um, Kael was calling him to come do battle. Um, he wouldn't come down. So then Kael transformed his sister Sitcha'il into stone. And that's further down the river here. Once Kael Chalamus found out his sister was transformed into stone, he came down to a tunnel across the river, walk down the river, side over here, there's a little rock over there that's called the seat, it's the letzel. 
he sat there, Hechel sat over here on where the scratch marks are. And then that's when they started doing battle with each other. And at one point, Hechel shot a thunderbolt. And that actually, thunderbolt, you can actually see that, goes right into the, into the rock there. And eventually, Hechel transformed Kel Helmus into this rock here. So that's our name for what now is commonly referred to as Lady Franklin Rock. But our name for it is actually Kel Helmus. Chechels, this is actually Chechels' breath. So where he is sitting there in a place called Techlis, where he sat when he was doing battle against Chechelimus. He was sitting there gritting his teeth, that's what Techlis means. And when he's gritting his teeth, he's actually whistling. As he's whistling, he was creating all these little waves. So when you get to that wide area just below Chechelimus, you can actually see the little breath marks as these little small tiny waves blown across the water. And that's Chechels' breath. Thakuya, also referred to as the cannibal woman. This is actually her home here, just above uh, Techlis and above Chelchelimus, and actually on Poplar Heights. So this is Poplar Heights. But you look from the one, this one side, you can see a bunch of caves there. I suspect that the larger cave was probably Thakuya's home. So Thakuya was the cannibal woman. Uh, so children were warned to stay out, stay, uh, not to stay out after the sun went down. And because she'd wait for the sun to go down, then she'd make her way down the river, have a big basket on her back. And if their children were still out there playing, after the sun went down, she'd grab them, put them in their basket, bring them up here, pitch their eyes so they couldn't run away. And then of course, uh, cook them and then uh, eat them. And so she was actually transformed uh, into stone. Uh, when she had gone, she had actually gone down, picked up some children, were bringing them back. The kids were escaping out of the basket. Like one of the girls had a sharp shell and she cut a hole in the bottom of the basket and uh, some of the kids were escaping. Every time the, one of them would escape, they'd snap a twig or something and she'd stop and say, oh, what's that? Oh, grandmother, you stepped on the twig. Okay, she'd keep walking. Another kid would escape, step on the rock and the rock would teeter, make a noise. She'd stop again. Oh, what's that? Oh, grandmother, you stepped on the rock. Okay, so then she'd keep walking. Quite a few of the kids were able to escape, but then there's one young boy that had a hump on his back they tried to push him through the hole, but he couldn't get him through, so he got stuck. They couldn't take him back out, couldn't push him through, so all the rest of the kids were stuck in the basket. So the older kids made a plan. They said, when we get up to her home, she's going to pitch our eyes. So close your eyes really tight like this. So when she puts pitch on your eyes, you can take the pitch off. You can see it, and we can run away. But the younger kids didn't listen. Only the older kids did. So the younger kids ended up getting their eyes pitched shut. So they had to make another plan. And so what she did when she got the kids up there, she started a fire because she wanted to do her song and her dance. And she started a fire and she went and uh, brought, dragged a log over there in front of the children. She gave them all sticks and she said, when I start doing my song, I want you to sing my song for me. And so the kids made another plan. One of the older kids said, well, once she starts dancing around the fire, third time we'll grab this log and use that to push her into the, into the fire. So sure enough, oh, she actually heard them talking. She hollered over there. But he gets talking about, and one of, the, one of the older ones said, Oh, Grandmother, we're just saying that when you start singing and dancing, we're going to drum really hard and we're going to sing really loud for you. And she says, Oh, good, good, she said. So she's happy with that. Then she started doing her song and dance. Sure enough, third time around, the kids jumped up, grabbed that log, pushed her into the fire. She ended up burning into the fire. And uh, because she was a mosquito woman, what happened was that the fire was almost out. And these two men, Tilly Gutierrez says, these two men came approached. And they're both cold and hungry. They wanted to get the fire going again. So the first one went up to the fire. <sighs> fire kind of flared up and burned him in the front, front of his chest. And he became the black bear with a white spot on his chest. But the fire just about went out again. Second man came up. <sighs> fire just flared right up. Burned the whole front part of his chest and became the red robin. But when the fire flared up, they covered the Thokia. All the little cinders that came out were transformed into the mosquito. And that's why just like Thokia, the mosquito come out. After the sun goes down, just like Sophia, uh, she was a cannibal woman, so that's why the mosquito comes and sucks your blood. And just like Sophia, she was singing her song before she got pushed in the fire. That's the song you hear the mosquitoes singing just before they come and bite you. Aftam is the word for serpent. 
And this rock here is called Serpent uh, because it's actually a woman, woman Shalam, Indian doctor, who actually challenged Kachals. All throughout the valley, there are many Indian doctors, many warriors who challenged Kachals. And of course, because they didn't have the same power, they'd get defeated. And Kachals would actually transform them into the source of their spirit power. So this woman, her spirit power came from the serpent. And she challenged Kachals, lost the battle. And so when Kachals transformed her into stone, she was transformed into her spirit power, the serpent. So that's why you look at this rock, you can see the coils here of the serpent, and then right on top you can see the head of the serpent. And the late Susan Josh Peter says, if you go there certain times of the year, that whole rock is just covered with all these snakes that are just all over the whole rock. So af meaning serpent. Tawit is an expert hunter. A regular hunter is what we call Hawa, but Tawit is an expert hunter, and the elders say that uh, expert hunters are the ones that always get something when they go hunting. They also say it's almost like the game comes to them when they go hunting. So that's Tawit is an expert hunter. It comes from the story of, of an abandoned boy uh, in the village over here, and on this gravel bar that's called Hemhemethuk, where they make sokka oil, there was a village located there, and this young boy was begging, going around begging for food, even though his parents uh, provided him well, he was begging for food. And so the, one of the men reported to the father what his son was doing. So the father asked one of the other men to take his son back into the forest under the false pretenses that he's going to teach him the use of magic substances and that. But while he was up there, everyone was packing up their canoes and getting ready to move back down river because they were up there for the drying. And so they're taking the planks off the longhouses, put, tying their canoes together with the planks and loading their belongings. They actually left, left that young boy up in the mountain. When he came back down, he noticed that he was abandoned. Everyone was gone. And then he saw this log. He sat down on this log. And while he was sitting there, his dog came up to him, brought him to the end of the log. And he went to the end of the log. And there he saw the shell with burning embers of uh, fern bushes inside there. And so this, he knew it as his grandmother who left that, those embers for him so that he could actually make a fire to warm up and also to cook his food. So because he was so young, he had to teach himself how to fish, teach himself how to hunt, and he became an expert hunter. Uh, he actually had help from uh, Chitzo Siam, the, the creator, the great spirit, actually came down and gave him a special cape that when he passed that cape through the water, all the schools of fish would appear, and that's what he would use, use to smoke all those fish to. He had all kinds of uh, resources, like uh, smoked salmon, dried salmon. He sent word down and uh, asked one of his bird friends to fly down and invite his grandmother up and tell my grandmother I have lots, lots of food and uh, invite her up. So his grandmother came up to live with him up there. And then he forgave his people, uh, but he was angry at his parents for abandoning him. So he sent his bird friend down there, go tell everyone that I have much, much food up here. And so everyone moved back up there. And finally, he forgave his mother and father, and he sent word for them to come up as well. So everybody came back up here, and he became, became their Siam, became their leader. Um, but this one day, he's walking down, and he's chasing an elk. He's going after this elk, and uh, he's walking down the edge of the water, carrying a spear in his left hand. His hunting dog was walking down on the, on the sandbar there in front of him. The elk was swimming across the river, almost on the other side, right about at that point there. And right at that moment, that's when Kachels, was traveling up in the mountains. If you go up to Yale, you can see how the river turns, comes down south, runs like this, and then turns south again. Right at that point, Chechaus was up in the mountain and he ran into this Shalam, an Indian doctor. And that Shalam was questioning Chechaus's power. He said, I don't think you, I don't believe you have that power because he'd heard of all the different transformations that Chechaus had done. So Chechaus said, I'll show you my power. And he looked down and he could see that hunter with his spear and the dog and the elk and he pointed his finger like that and transform them all into stone. So Tilly Gutierrez, who shared the story, says that um, all the young children, when they're on their way up there to go dry rock fishing, they always stop there and they're always told that story. And so she said it was an important story because this story enticed the children to believe in the Shokuyam stories because our belief in them is that they're true, that they really happened.